Pull-out shelves are an excellent way to add storage efficiency and ergonomics to your kitchen cabinets. So if you'd like to learn how to make your own, then stick around and I'll show you how. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of DP Shop Talk. And today we're gonna to take a look at how to retrofit your kitchen cabinets with a set of pullout shelves. Now pullouts are a great way to maximize your storage efficiency since all those items that get stored at the back of the cabinet are easily accessed when the pullout is slid forward. So they're a great way to retrofit existing cabinets and they're also a feature that I always recommend to clients when I'm building a set of new cabinets since they really increase your storage efficiency and how you can organize things. So we'll start here in the shop and I'll show you how to build the pullouts and then I'll take you with me to site and I'll show you how to do the installation. So the first thing you need to do is get a set of accurate measurements of the cabinet that the pullouts are going in. So you want to measure the overall cabinet width inside, the height, and the depth. And you also want to make sure that your cabinet sides are parallel to each other going front to back and top to bottom. And then next you need to measure any projections that encroach into your overall cabinet width. Things like hinges or doors or face frames, anything that, that closes down your opening at the front. So that dimension is going to be used to determine how thick the spacers need to be uh, to mount your slides on so that everything will, will slide in and out without uh, hitting any projections. So next you need to determine the number of pullouts that you want the height of them and the vertical spacing between. Now this is largely determined by what's going to be stored on the pullouts. So generally for larger items you want higher sides on the pullouts and more space in between them and for smaller items shorter sides and less space in between them. Now the other factor to consider for the height of the pullout sides is the overall width of the pullout. If your pullout is going to be wider then you want to make your sides a little bit higher just to avoid having any sagging in the middle. So the most critical part is working out your overall pullout width. Now the formula for that is inside cabinet width minus the thickness of all your spacer strips minus the thickness of both of your slides minus an extra 30 second of an inch. So I'll plug in all the numbers that I'm using so you can see how that works out. So your spacer strips are determined by the measurement that you took earlier for any projections that come into the cabinet space. Uh, full extension pullouts are usually half an inch thick and then I take an extra 30 second of an inch off of, uh, of that total uh, just for some extra breathing room for the slides. I find the slides work better and everything just fits perfect if you just bring it down by an extra 30 second of an inch. Now for the pullout depth from front to back uh, for a 24 inch base cabinet I usually go with 22 inch slides and a uh, 22 inch pullout depth. So the final step before we make any cuts is to write the cut list. So I have the part, the quantity of them, the thickness of the material, the width, the length, and any special note. So usually I'll note which uh, edges get edge banded or any special treatment that that part gets. Now I won't go into all the math since that's easy enough to work out based on the overall size that we calculated earlier, your material thickness, and your construction method. Now I'm using all 5 8 inch melamine uh, for these pullouts and you'll see the construction method and how all the parts uh, fit together when we get to the assembly process. So when you're working with sheet goods, make sure that you carefully measure the actual thickness of the material that you're working with. Don't just assume that the, uh, the nominal thickness that, that's given is accurate because most times it's not. So that'll throw off all of your calculations if you go with that nominal thickness rather than actual thickness. So in this case, the 5 8 inch melamine that I'm using measures about a 64th of an inch uh, thicker than 5 8 so that has to get taken into account in all my calculations. Now a quick tip on keeping nasty numbers out of your cut list. For example here I have 20 and 3 quarters and then I'll make a little note minus a 32nd of an inch. So rather than having uh, 20 and 23 32nds 
uh, in my cut list, I find it faster to have that 20 and 3 quarters and then the little note to minus a 30 second. So you set the saw to 20 and 3 quarters, back it off a 30 second of an inch, and you're good to go. So I find that faster than, than trying to remember, okay, well, where's 20, 23, 30 seconds at on, on the scale? So that's a, a quick tip for making uh, that a little easier. Now the 32nd, that comes from a 64th times 2, because there's two thicknesses there of the melamine in, in the pull-out sides. Uh, so you multiply that by 2, that's where the 32nd uh, comes into play. So now it's time to actually make some cuts. So I started by ripping all the pull-out sides to width on the table saw. Now for this particular project, I had enough smaller pieces of melamine around the shop to build the two pull-outs from. Now normally I would be starting with a full sheet, and in that case I would use my MPT or multi-purpose table along with my track saw to break down the sheet goods into manageable pieces. Now if you don't have a larger table saw, you could also make all of your finish cuts with the MPT using the shop built accessories and a track saw. For more information about the MPT and how to build your own, you can click on the link above. Next I ripped the bottoms to width and then used my off cuts to rip the spacer strips from. Once all of the ripping was done, it was on to edge banding. Now for this I'm using iron on edge tape. So I clamped one of the pullout sides in the vise and used it as a reference to rip as many pieces of the tape as I needed to rough length. So the edge banding needs to be done with all of the parts that have visible edges. Next I position the tape and use the iron to adhere it. So for best results you want to move the iron slowly and use a firm even downward pressure. So once I reached the end I took one more quick pass moving backwards. Now a quick tip for working on larger projects and starting from full sheets, I always do my edge banding with full 8 foot rips and use my edge banding stands to make the process quicker and more efficient. So once the edge tape had cooled down a bit, I snapped off the ends and used my double edge trimmer to trim the long edges flush. Now a sharp chisel will work just as well to do this if you don't have a trimmer. Then I took a laminate file and filed the sharp edges. Next I cut all the sides and spacer strips to length on the table saw. Now this is why I was able to do a rough snap on the ends of the edge tape since both ends get cleaned up at the saw. So for cross cuts like this I use my rip fence pulled back as a stop reference for repetitive cuts. Then the pull out bottoms got one end cleaned up and then cut to final length. Now when I'm working with melamine I use an 80 tooth melamine blade for chip free cuts. Once all of the cross cutting was done, I did the edge banding on any ends that would be visible on the side pieces or the spacer strips. I used the same process with the iron as the long edges. Now when it comes to trimming the banding here, I use a sharp chisel to carefully trim the ends flush for a nice clean cut and then finish up with the trimmer and the file. So before we get into the actual assembly, I just want to quickly show you the construction layout of the pullout. So you have your two sides your front and your back. So the front and the back, they're the same length as the width of the bottom. So they just sit at the front and back edges. And then the sides, which are the 22 inches long uh, for the 22 inch slides, they just uh, sit on and everything gets sandwiched between those. So the corner joints get screwed together and then the bottom gets screwed on through uh, the, uh, the sides and the front and the back around the perimeter. So once the pullouts were assembled, it was time to install the slides. So I started by separating the two components of the slide so that I could work with the inner piece. I set the front of the slide an eighth of an inch back from the front of the pullout and then marked the vertical centers of the three holes that I wanted to use. I followed that by marking five eighths of an inch up from the bottom to give my center point and then drilled a small pilot hole at each one. Then I drove the three small screws to install the slide. The final step of the construction was to install the fast cap screw covers on all the exposed screw heads. 
So that completes the construction of the pullouts. So first thing tomorrow morning, we'll load up and head to site and I'll show you how to do the installation. So I've just arrived on site. I brought in the pullouts and all the tools that I need to do the install. So these pullouts are going in this kitchen island with one going at the bottom and one midway up. So I always start with the top pullout and then work my way down. Now the reason for that is I use these spacer sticks to reference the height of the spacer strips and the slides. And uh, so this, they just sit on top of there and I can attach them so it makes it very quick, easy and accurate to do the installation. Now in this case, uh, where there's only two pullouts, I only need the sticks at one length since there's the midway pullout and then one that sits at the bottom of the cabinet. But if you were doing something like a pantry where you have multiple pullouts, then you can just cut those sticks shorter as you work your way down the cabinet. And also just in case you're wondering, I've removed the door uh, on one side here just to make things a little easier to see, uh, but there is another door that goes on that side. So the first step in the installation process is to mark and drill the screw holes for the other half of the slides in the spacer strips. I just used the same process as I did in the shop for the inner part of the slide. The only thing that was different was the horizontal marks were centered in the width of the spacer strip. Now the spacer strips for the bottom pullouts are double thick to clear the hinges, so I just tacked them together with brad nails from the back. I used the same process to install the slides on both of those. So with the spacer stick standing in place, I set the spacer strip on top and pre-drilled and countersunk for some inch and an eighth long screws. Then I installed the slide with truss head screws into the holes that I had marked and pre-drilled earlier. I repeated the same process for the double thick spacer at the bottom with it sitting right on the bottom of the cabinet and attached it with some inch and three quarter screws. After repeating the same process on the other side of the cabinet, it was time to install the pullets. It's just a matter of aligning the slides and pushing them in to engage them. Now this is the part where all your hard work and careful calculations pay off. So that wraps up the installation of these pullout shelves. So hopefully you're able to take what you've learned and uh, build a set of pullout shelves of your own. Now, if you guys would like to see more project videos like this, how-to videos, let me know in the comments below. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, don't forget to like, share, and hit that subscribe button. As always, make sure you leave your ideas, thoughts, and questions down in the comments below. So thanks for watching, and until next time, Let's talk shop.